this is going to be interesting guys uh, we are going to see if we can fix the LCD display on my dev term now I don't think you all have seen the inside so we'll be pulling it apart obviously to do this uh, and you're gonna along the way you're gonna see my fix to get the one that's in here working and the goal is to get this one that was sent from Clockwork Pi. We'll uh, take that out of the box and we'll go ahead and open this and see what happens. This is the LCD that was sent as a replacement. I do have the manual here. Uh, you can see that right here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what we're doing here in the manual. So mounting the screen is what we're working on and actually replacing the screen. It's a pretty simple process. You can see this is really snap fit. Here is the new LCD screen. Let's go ahead and open that up. Now this, again, I guess I should also state that this was sent to me for free, which was really nice of them to do that. And again, they were just generous to send this out to me, especially uh, my small channel. So I really want to thank them for supporting uh, retro combs and allowing me to do this. And it has been a blast, but I've got several blog posts slash videos planned for this. I've got some really retro uh, related stuff too coming. And let me go ahead and open up and see what our replacement looks like. I have not opened this up yet. Nothing inside, just the box. Obviously shipped directly from the factory. Hey, this, this could be fun, here you go. There we go. So let's go ahead and get this out right here. Now I'm gonna be very careful because uh, after doing some reading online, it turns out that some other folks not many, I probably just, you know, a couple have had problems with their LCD screen. So I'm gonna be very careful that we don't make a mistake and damage this one. Uh, for some reason, that little cable is, that ribbon cable, which I'll show you here in a little bit, is pretty fragile. Okay, there it is right there. Now there is a coating on here. Let me bring this up here so you can take a look at it. So there is, this is on here, I will uh, this, um, overlay the film. I will leave that on here until we're done. And taking a look at it, looks like everything is in pretty good shape. Um, right here, this is the cable that was split on my original one. I think we're gonna be okay. It looks like that's in pretty good shape. So what we're gonna do now is, and this is where the ribbon cable comes in right here. So we're gonna be very careful with this. And we're gonna just set this over to the side and then we're gonna bring the dev term back into view here and we're going to break down the dev term now when i break it down as i mentioned you're going to get you're going to get a chance to see what i had to do to get the old one in here you're also going to chance get a chance to see my hack uh, that i did to get this thing working how this works is you have these two little wheels on the left and right those do nothing whatsoever they really don't they don't do anything whatsoever but hold all of this together and so what we're going to do is we're going to peel these off of here and you just turn them about 90 degrees and then they just pull right off there you go see that one we'll go ahead and pull this one off right here and there's that one okay and then we go ahead and we just lift the top part of the case off right here now here we go you're gonna get a chance to see the inside i'm gonna be very careful here too because it kind of snaps on there i tell you it's harder to get off than it is to take off that is for sure i'll go ahead and move this up here a little bit for you there we go so there's the inside of the dev term now all of this sits into this case and i've got a, uh, these little sliders on the sides that are the covers for all the different ports. So we're gonna go ahead and pull those out before I lose them. So I'm gonna take these off right here and set them, set them up here. And then here is our little button. Cutest little, cutest little start button you've ever seen is right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that to the side. And then what I'm going to do is lift all of this out of the bottom case. Let me pull this out here slowly. All right, and as you can see, all that just lifts right out of the bottom case. So we're going to set the bottom case over here to the side and we'll go ahead and pop this down. Now here's this uh, little keyboard. This keyboard's a whole lot of fun. We're going to go ahead and just pop this out. Now this is really kind of cool. This this sits seats in with pogo pins. So there's no cable. It just pops right out. Check that out. And there's your little pogo pins. It's really a just a interesting and creative way to do that with the pogo pins. And then the pogo pins are right there. Now it's going to get a little bit tricky. 
So what I need to do now is I need to flip this over. And uh, right now you can kind of see some of the damage on the original one, but we're gonna break that apart here in just a minute. So I'm gonna flip this over. The other thing we have to do is we have to take off the battery pack here. So these are the batteries. So you're really getting a great inside look at this as we change out this LCD screen. I am going to, just so I don't accidentally scratch the screen, let me go ahead and lift this up and we're gonna put it right on here on this manual so it doesn't scratch it. I don't think there's anything under here, but sure enough, I'll have a piece of grit or sand or something under here. Now this is pretty easy to take off too. And you'll also notice there are pogo pins here. So what we do is we take these off. Now the fun part is trying to remember how to put all this back together, but I've done it several times, so we should not have a problem, that is for sure. And then underneath here, we should have access to our ribbon cable and actually you can see it right there so we're going to lift this out so again no, no nothing connect other than these little pogo pens which is really just again a great design for this all right here's that cable right here and you can see this right here i am going to i think i can zoom in a little bit there we go and let you watch me take that off and uh, i didn't bring a screwdriver because typically you don't need one so what i'm going to do is just go ahead and pull this out with my fingernail right there and I'm gonna go ahead and lift this ribbon cable out and that's you can see it's just off a little bit because I have to kind of tuck it and insert it. I wish that cable were just a little bit more precise uh, but I'm trying to be very careful with it now once I do that I can flip it back over so let me go ahead and zoom back out here and we are going to slowly take out the old LCD screen and I'm gonna show you my hacky hack that I got to work. Now this is tricky too because you gotta be very careful you don't want to break these holders here. That would not be good. Now I, since we have this one, uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit here. So here's a piece that didn't make it back into the assembly. I couldn't get everything crammed back in here to make it work with my wire I have on here. So here's the wire I had to solder right here. So I had to go inside here pull this frame off, which I can show you that now. I had to pull all of this apart down to basically its bare components. So you get a chance really to see how this thing's made. Underneath here, right here, is a um, plastic kind of reflector, refractor. The lights, the LEDs are here. It glows through here and it lights up and then that provides the backlight. But you can see here kind of the hacky mess I had to make. I had to scrape off enough of the ribbon cable plastic so that I could get down to some metal so that I could actually solder this little jumper across from here to here to get the uh, the power to the backlit screen. So the screen was working. It was working. You could take a flashlight right up to it and you could see the words and the mouse and everything moving. You kind of had to follow the mouse with the flashlight. Uh, but it's just this backlight wasn't working. But once I did my little hack right there, everything was great and it was bright and you've all seen it in video. So now we're gonna go ahead and set this aside. We're gonna put in the new one and hopefully it's going to work. So here's all the components and pieces of that. We'll set that aside. Nice hack. Um, I, I think it was nice. <laughs> It was a long way to get there. I tried a couple of different things, Jamie, uh, but I really wanted to try and figure it out. Um, and once I figured out that uh, that ribbon was cut, really it was all a matter of, I have never tried to repair ribbon cable. That was the first time I've ever tried to re repair ribbon cable. And again, it was all about just getting enough of that coating off so that I could get a connection, a good solder connection, and then flopping it over, but then having to remove some pieces so that everything would fit. So eh, it was it was pretty good. It worked. You know, the, the great thing about it is, as you'll see in the prepared video, I used the hacked LCD throughout the entire video. I don't think you'll ever know. I don't think you could ever tell uh, the difference between that and when we insert the new one here in just a minute, and it's hopefully going to work. So uh, so thanks. I appreciate the, uh, the kind compliment there, my good hacky friend over at Jamie's hack shack. All right, let's see if we can get this thing in here. So how this works is you align again this connector right here with this little slot right here. So we're going to set this in and we want to be very careful again that we don't damage anything putting this in. I'm pretty sure I didn't damage it because when I looked at it, it looked like it was it had been pretty deep split. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in here very easily. We're going to go ahead and leave the, uh, the cover on 
right here, this little frame is very flimsy. I mean, it, it keeps shooting. It'll shoot up on you if you're not careful. And it, that's what it's doing. There we go, right there. So have to be very careful so that you don't get that issue. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna flip this back over and we are going to put in the ribbon cable. So I'll go ahead and zoom in for you, right there. And this is usually pretty easy. This doesn't take a whole lot. So I need to go ahead and flip this up right there. And then we just kind of set it in there. Noise there. Let me make sure everything's good here before I, there we go. Perfect. Should we test it? Yeah, let's go ahead and put the battery pack in. Now, normally I probably wouldn't do that, but, and then what we're gonna do is go ahead and put this on right here. So let's go ahead and finish putting our little jumpers on here. Now these do a couple of things. First of all, they hold the battery in, but it's also the spacer to, for the uh, top case or the bottom case in this case. <laughs> bottom case in this case. never mind okay back Steven just work right gotcha okay all right now we should since we have the battery we should be able to flip it over turn it on and check out the screen here we go uh, make sure I don't need anything else I really don't by the way this is the um, in case you're interested this is the thermal printer well, I'll tell you what let's just take a quick look here while we're in here so that you can see everything. This is the thermal printer which is just so much fun I gotta tell you uh, so there's a um, connector that fits back here. Well, I have that right here. And all it does is holds the paper. So the paper's in here, you pull off the cover, you connect it, and then that's your thermal printer. It's pretty cool. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out the best ways to use it, but the OS does come with the thermal printer driver installed already, which is really nice. This is the external accessory board. Uh, this is designed so that this can be swapped out with other boards so other folks could design a board and put in here but this board this particular board is just providing us a couple of usb out port or usb ports it's also providing access to a printer right here there is another thing for a camera i think a raspberry pi camera will work with that i've got to explore that i think i have a raspberry pi camera somewhere but i want to explore that but somebody could again replace this and pull it out you also have a cooling fan here for everything inside so it's just a nice board over here we have our core our cpu core board and you can see we have a rock chip in here uh basically a system on a chip you just you plug it in you swipe and push it down and it clicks into place like a dim slot and this is a core a06 so it is a uh four core or eight core i can't remember i think it's four core no, maybe it's eight core with four gigabytes, I think is what it is, but all that'll be in the other video. And then of course on here, you have your basic ports too. So there's, there's just a little tour for you. Now let's turn it over and see. Keep your fingers crossed, everybody. Here we go. Now I am going to, you can see the SD card is here. Here is the power switch. It should power on without me having to put it back in the case. So that should not be a problem. All right, here we go. We're gonna turn it on. Now it will not, Let's not, we don't get scared after the first few seconds. It takes a while for the thing just to, to pop up. So here we go. All right, we've got a light right here. You can see that, I think, right there. So now we're gonna wait for the screen and uh, let's keep our fingers crossed. There we go, we have a screen, yes. Outstanding. So now we have, instead of my hacked up version right here, we have the screen with everything put together and it's all good to go. Let's get past the boot up screen here. We do have one more thing, it's alive, but we don't have our startup screen. There we go, there we go, right there, there you go, see it? Now, what's missing? I can't do anything because the keyboard is out of the pogo plug. I have never tried just trying to plug it in to see if that would work. Uh, I don't think it's gonna, I don't, shouldn't be any problem, right? What's the worst that could happen, right? I think it's going to, let me go ahead and put it on here. Because I need to shut it down and I need to shut it down properly, so I need that wheel right there. All right, we're in. And nope, it, oh no, wait, there it is, look. All right, excellent. There you go, you can see the little screen. Now, one of the other things I'm hoping to do, because I know there is, there's a micro HDMI out right here. One of the things I'm hoping to do uh, later as I show off some of the features of this thing is actually plug it in and uh, do a screen capture so I can do some screen capturing there. So that is great. Oh man, I'm so glad that that's working. Let's go ahead and peel off. I think we're safe now. We can peel off our protective coating. 
Oh, this is satisfaction right here, isn't it? Whenever you're to the point where you can take off your protective coating. There we go. Yeah, it's real now, guys. Well, I can show you one other couple of pieces here. Uh, right here is our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, antenna, which is kind of cool there. And then you can see some of the ports um, over here. There we go. So there's a uh, US, uh, micro USB. We have two USB, USB-B. Over here we have a, our USB, where is that? A, yeah, A, USB-B, uh, USB-C, I think we've got them all. And then this is that micro HDMI. And look, a headphone jack. How about that? That's pretty cool. All right, so now what I'm gonna do so I can put this thing back together, I'm gonna scroll up here and I am going to shut this guy down. So you can press the roller ball right here and it is a mouse click or you can use these buttons down here. So there's left, middle, and right. So that's pretty neat. These are game controllers. So you see you have cursors, cursor control, but you also have a game controller. So you could load up a uh, emulator uh, on here and run your games if you wanna do that. And we'll be playing with that in a later prepared video, or maybe I uh, maybe do another live stream where we play, if I can get the output working from the HDMI to a capture card, we may actually try and play some uh, retro games on this device during a live stream. So if you think that would be fun to watch, let me know. Uh, let me go ahead and log out of here. And I'm going to shut down. All right, let's see if we can get this back together. So the first thing we need to do is get it back in its bottom case. That's the easy part. Trust me, that is the easy part. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this back over here. And drop it in into place. And you do wanna kind of push it into place to make sure it sits down in there. We need to go ahead and put these plates back in. And uh, if you look, on the plate, they actually have the identifier for the port, which is nice. So let's go ahead and sneak this one in here and it just kind of slides right there. See that one in place right there. We'll do the same on the other side. And then you've also it tells you which side it goes on to there with an R with right. Let's go and pop that down there. All right, and this is where it gets really tricky. Now we've got to get this little guy in here, which is our start button. Drop that in there. Now, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move the instruction manual, and this is probably the hardest part of the whole deal right here, and that is getting the top on. Um, so you've got to kind of hook it from the front and then get it down, but you're pushing it down all the time or it will not seal so see i've already missed it let's try it again so i got it there we go all right and once you get it pushed down before you put the knobs on you really need to check make sure you got a good seal all the way around and you don't have to be afraid of it that's for sure it's it's pretty pretty structurally sound. And then we just turn that on and then we scroll that on and then we'll come to the over, over to the other side. Do the same thing. If it doesn't pop off on you, there we go. And turn it. And that is what it looks like. Hey, Ms. Love, thank you so much. I know, sigh of relief. Gotta go, duty calls. I understand and thank you so much for the super chat. I will keep it up. Uh, and let's see, there you go. Uh, so Miss Lav uh, was very kind to send me a nice super chat. Thank you very, very much, Miss Lav, and good luck back at work. Uh, have a good one, and hopefully you have uh, as good a luck as I have fixing your IT stuff at work that I had here. So, all right, it is turned back on. I am running on batteries, as I said. I have good news. We are working right there all right uh if you want I, if you if i've got if i've got you a second let me show you something cool that is uh something i've been working on that'll be part of not the next video but another video as i've mentioned and let me go ahead and zoom in here uh as as you may know or have noticed this design is very similar to a tandy trs 80 model 100 if you look at one of those and i have one of those actually i have one of those hold on so here it is here's the Tandy Model One or Tandy TRS80 Model 100, but as you can see, this is the other reason I like these two cameras because I can uh, get more of a pulled-out kind of view. So let me go ahead and share these with you. Check this out. 
So this is obviously loosely based on this, but the screen, check that out. The, the screen aspect ratio is very, very similar. Isn't that cool? And uh, it does, I can confirm it does take its design cues from this. So that was an inspiration for it. You would imagine, you know, that you might want to use this kind of like that device. And the Tandy 100 was really a device for really one purpose, let's face it, and it was word processing. Maybe two purposes if you were a journalist because you could have an acoustic coupler, you could plug it into a phone and you could send that article back to the presses to be print, right? So that's really kind of cool. So of course, now with a modern computer like this, you can do that and we have Wi-Fi and we can have connections and do all that. Uh, and of course we can build in a word processor. This is so much more capable, but somebody has ported, if you can imagine, the operating system from the Tandy TRS-80 to the Clockwork Pi. So you can see, uh, it's hard to see right there, but I have a piece of software on here, here called Virtual T. Check this out. I'm gonna go ahead and load it. Get ready. We can do it. There we go. And how about that? So this is the interface that you would get on the Tandy 100 and everything works. It's pretty fun. You can use your cursor keys and it's just like having the Tandy 100 on here. The one thing that I wish they would do is have a way that I could full screen. Right now you can't full screen this. You can move this around, but you can't full screen it so that it just fills the screen. That would be something uh, I'm gonna have to make a recommendation and see if they can do because if I just go full, there's no full screen option. It's either the way it is or it minimizes. Uh, so would be better, but you can see if I want to run a basic program with the Tandy Model 100. Now this is where it gets tricky too with this fun little 65%. So I can program in basic on this teeny tiny little 65% keyboard. See, I've already made a mistake. Let me go ahead and get out of here. And let's say uh, print and uh, quotations. Uh, of course, we got to do the obligatory retro combs. And then uh, from doing this, I think I needed two spaces to make this work. And then we'll do a semicolon after that. We'll hit enter. We'll do 20. So this is a way that you can get uh, basic on this machine pretty easily. Now, there are other versions, but if you want to work in TRS model 80 uh, basic, this is a good one right here. And then we'll go to 10. And then we'll hit enter. And then we're going to run that right here. And you can see it runs, and it runs about the regular speed, about full speed. Does a, uh, you know, I tr Mark, I tried F11. Let me try it again. Uh, before I tried it, it didn't do anything. Let's see. Yeah, see, it doesn't do anything for this. It does work for all the other applications, but for some reason, this one is locked down uh, to this specific size. So that's why I'm gonna reach out to them and see, because boy, wouldn't that look good if that were just all right there? It would just have a great feel. Now to break, if I remember, break is, uh, da -da, is it F? There we go. Control C actually worked. So let's go ahead and list. Uh, yeah, the Pico 8 stuff, uh, what I understand is people love this device for the Pico 8 because you can do it. This is a 1280 by 4, see 640 by 4, yeah, 1280 by 480 resolution. So it'll fit in a little window here. Half of it would be Pico. And then you can have another window over here for resources. I have yet to purchase it, but it would be, this would be a perfect addition to it. And again, you have the game pads right here. So you could really program on the one half and try it over here. So it's really kind of cool. So now if we go back home, Got my other one over here, make sure I know what I'm selecting. You can see your files are here. We go back to two, you have uh, uh, F2, you have load right there, and I believe F8 takes you back, and there you go. So there is our program right here, running right there, Control C, get out of that, and uh, go back to F8. And you can see that you can do some text and you can type, so let's say blog, post. So if I really wanted to try this keyboard for some extended typing, oh, there we go. Let's try that again. And there we go. There you go. So you can see I have a file in there. So that is uh, just something I'll be sharing a little bit later as I dig more into it uh, for the prepared video for this. I'm really enjoying the heck out of this thing, especially Mark, if you were a pocket chip person, this will kind of get to you. And the 65% keyboard is definitely usable, but the thing that's great about it is you've got enough USB ports on here. You can see that here and another one over here that we could plug in an external 
uh, keyboard, we can plug in an external mouse, and with the micro HDMI, we can even plug it into a full-size monitor, use it for that, and then take it on the go. Uh, it is going to start traveling with me wherever I go just for fun. And uh, let me go back here and I'll shut it off so that you guys can see how that works. So I go do this, come down here to log out, and we'll just shut down, and that's all there is to it. It does, um, the batteries that are in the back here that I mentioned earlier, this device does recharge those batteries too. So when you're plugged into USB-C, you're also, you're not only operating it, but you are also recharging, which is really nice. There is a Mega 65 emulator that is a Debian package. This runs a version of Ubuntu. If I can get that emulator running on this, and especially if we can get the keyboard or the uh, game controllers, this would be the ultimate take and go Mega 65. Uh, so, I, of course, I can run uh, the Mega 65 emulator on my Mac, but it'd be so much more fun with this and being able to take it and program it uh, and use this like a little mini. You can get Vice. I'm, I'm not sure if Vice will run on it. I'm going to check that out too. And then also Emulation Station is supposed to work on this. So even if I just put Emulation Station on this, took this to go, this would be a great retro console to go with you, share, show off, you know, uh, uh, you know, Jamie going up to the makerspace, just having this in your back pocket and showing this to people and having emulation station running, that would be just a lot of fun. So there's a lot of cool things you could do there. We'll go to this screen right here. And right now, Retrocombs out. Good to see you all. Happy Sunday, everybody.